place is dropped in your afternoon. It's Thursdays with Nico coming up in short order once Nico joins us from the West Coast. And we'll go over what Nico thought about uh, the week that was playing in an international window and getting into the weekend that will be. Uh, a lot of matches in the 7.30 window on your Saturday night. And uh, obviously, we will get into uh, certain performances that uh, were tied to uh, what he was able to watch in Seattle. So plenty to talk about there as uh, we go into what happened uh, last week. Interesting matchups this week. There are a couple that uh, obviously do stand out. And you look at uh, last week with Seattle, we'll get into that and a couple of other things. News of the day. And part of it has to do with uh, the Premier League, actually. And the uh, the Premier League decided that uh, they were going to now monitor folks and see, you know, if they're on the up and up and they're being honest when it comes to wanting to purchase franchises. So uh, significant changes made by the Premier League. So here's here's what uh, here, here's what they say is what's going down in in the premier league individuals found to have committed human rights abuses uh will be turned down to be an owner or director uh, unable to be an owner or director of a premier league club under new rules human rights abuses based on the global human rights sanctions regulations 2020 will now be one of a number of additional disqualifying events under a beefed-up owners and directors test. The league also has the power to block people from becoming directors where they're under investigation for conduct that would result in a disqualifying event if proven. Premier League has faced strong criticism in the past from Amnesty International, in part for allowing the Saudis' uh, PIF, the public investment fund, to lead lead the takeover of Newcastle, despite the country's human rights record. Under the new rules approved by clubs on Thursday, a person or a company being subject to government sanctions is now also disqualified. Uh, the uh, wide range of uh, criminal offenses that could result in disqualification has been extended to include offenses involving violence, cor- corruption, fraud, tax evasion, and hate crimes. The league has also voted to widen the group of regulatory authorities where an existing suspension would result in disqualification to now include the Charity Commission the Financial Conduct Authority, the Prudential Conduct Authority, and Her Majesty's uh, tax folks, the HMRC. So with that, leagues moves, uh, courtesy of our friends at Sky, to strengthen their test come at a time when a government white paper on football is proposing a new independent regulator that would set an enhanced owners and directors test intended to replace what uh, is currently being used by the Premier League, the Football Association, and the EFL. Decisions taken by the board under the uh, the new guidelines subject to review by a new independent oversight panel. Threshold for control has been lowered to 25%. Club and chief executives will now be brought uh, under uh, the scope of that new owners and directors test. Process should also be more transparent. The league is uh, discussing uh, acquisition materials, information required in order to complete due diligence published in the takeover process the uh, and that's uh, to ensure ongoing compliance with the owners and directors test the league is also committed to publishing the names of individuals or companies who've been disqualified under the owners and directors test to create an annual compliance report so the new disqualifying events individuals and companies subject to government sanctions a new disqualifying event for human rights abuses extending the list of criminal offenses, extending the list of regulatory authorities, broadening the scope of insolvency provisions to enable the league to take action against individuals involved in previous insolvencies in a wider range of circumstances, a new power for the league to stop those who wish to become directors where they are under investigation for conduct that would result in a disqualifying event if proven. So it appears that the Premier League has now listened to uh, what everybody has been saying, significant changes on the owners and directors test. But Amnesty International says it's a step forward. The the, uh, UK Economics Affairs Director, Peter Frankenthal, 
said it was a step in the right direction, but he added, quote, it'll make <clears throat> little difference unless powerful individuals linked to serious human rights violations overseas are definitively barred from taking control of Premier League clubs, using them for state sports washing. Would, for instance, a future bid involving Saudi or Qatari sovereign wealth funds be blocked by the rule change? It's far from clear that they would. Merely checking whether people are on an existing UK sanctions list is a very low bar. Sanctions list reflects the government's foreign policy priorities rather than any objective assessment of human rights issues. Nearly three years ago, we proposed, meaning Amnesty International, a detailed new human rights compliant test that would prohibit football ownership where individuals were complicit in acts of torture, slavery, human trafficking, and war crimes. The acid test of whether this new rule is fit for purpose is whether it would involve serious efforts to assess the involvement of prospective buyers in human rights abuses. Premier League needs to adopt an active screening process and not just outsource its due diligence to others. Top flight English football still risks becoming the sports washing toy of authoritarian figures around the world unless the Premier League gets this right. That is, uh, that's the news out of the Premier League this, uh, this morning slash this afternoon. And so now it is time to bring in this guy. Nico Moreno, it is that time to catch up with him. Hey, what's going on, John? Uh, having some uh, sound issues, but I think I'm good now. Happy to be on with you, of course, after a little bit of uh, national teams playing friendly spring tournaments, including U.S. men's national team, and then some continue to be mind-blowing results in MLS that I'm sure we'll talk about. That is true. We are. And um, what we are looking at, you know, obviously, since you are, since you're, since you're wearing the green, it's not quite the rave green. Oh, by the way, have you purchased or have, or do you have in your stacks? Oh, there's the rave green. Uh, cup number two, since it's 1008. Absolutely. Do you have in your stacks either the Bruce Lee kit or the Jimi Hendrix kit? I have both, yes. Yeah, smart man. See, I, Absolutely. Actually, Bruce Lee's kid is my favorite. I've said it a thousand times. Uh, I believe I said it in the show as well. He's uh, such an iconic figure. I thought it was uh, pretty smart. And um, in the way they used it, in, in the colors scheme, uh, in the design, uh, I love the black back on the on the red kid uh it, it just looks amazing so yes i definitely have both of those just thought i would ask you know c- considering that they they are pretty sweet and they would put you in the poor house you know once you did invest in those kinds of things but i just figured i would ask but since uh we we're discussing seattle let's discuss seattle uh somebody got four on the floor in a match against uh kansas city jordan morris 23rd, 54th, 69th, and 77th. Obviously, the Ben Sweat red kind of helped the, those last two. But Seattle put four on Sporting Kansas City, and Sporting had a 1-0 lead after the first five minutes. I mean, it was it was almost like the first five and then the second 85. But Jordan Morris put four in the back of the net for Seattle last week. Yeah, let's start talking about Jordan. I mean, he's a guy that at times gets – highly criticized and, and I have a hard time when people do it because he's such a great young man. He's uh, someone that's always willing to give to the community and he is a, a great soccer player. He's had a couple of knee injuries. Of course, we know that, but he always comes back stronger than ever. And this year he has been dynamic. He's been electric. Uh, he's been finishing. He's played a uh, wing. He's played now the nine. Uh, it, things don't always go his way, but when it does, when things are on, when he's on that Kobe 81 point just vibe, he, he is hot fire. And that's exactly what you saw in this one. The game played to his virtues, to his advantage. Uh, Sporting Kansas City allowed him to basically run to the back of the defenders, which is literally step one in that in that don't allow Jordan to go off on you book. I mean, anybody who has that needs to know that, and they didn't do that. Uh, but just his confidence, uh, I thought his finishing was fantastic. He did it all, had her uh, one touch, uh, controlling. I mean, he was just outstanding. So I'm happy for him because I saw the work kind of result in this start of a season 
when we saw him coming into preseason, he just looked fit, or at least to me, athletically. I asked him if he was doing anything different, and he just said he was working out. He was getting ready for this season, and that's paid off. So I always appreciate when a player puts in the work, puts in the time, and then he just shows up when he's needed. And this season, he's leading scorer in the league. He just passed Clem Dempsey in the list for all-time scorers in MLS. Um, he is second in goal contributions in between assists and goals, only short of uh, Nicolas Odero. So he's just been an amazing player, and I couldn't be happier for him. But I don't want to let this segment go with also applauding Leo Chu. He's another player that's been criticized, a U22 initiative player that hasn't really been able to have any effect with this squad, has had a hard time getting minutes, but that's another player that Bryant Smetzer has told us he is earning those minutes. So he's getting better defensively. He's getting better on reading uh, the system. He's getting better on getting into space. And he just took advantage and bullied Susie, who we did talk about last week that, you know, he's not the Susie of old. And uh, the Brazilian exploited it, got four assists officially, four assists, four goals. I've never seen it. Fantastic for the Rave Green that just looks like a team that's getting ready to uh, be a West Conference contender and uh, hopefully once again reach a, a final. So then let me ask you this. Let's get back to St. Louis. St. Louis, who, uh, and I know, and people will continue to sit there and wag their finger at me and go, you know, St. Louis, St. Louis, St. Louis, you keep poo-pooing St. Louis and they keep winning. Yeah, that's true. They have uh, bankrolled. 15 points when a lot of folks thought that they weren't going to be bankrolling 15 points. And I think it will help them out later in the year. But once again, I think for the third week in a row, we have a defender and a giveaway creating a goal for St. Louis. Joao Klaus scores two goals, five minutes apart. Joaquini scores. It was goalless at the break. Goalless at the break with RSL, which we kind of figured considering it was at Rio Tinto. Then, Four goals in basically 30 minutes. The Klaus goals, two minutes, uh, two goals, five minutes apart. St. Louis, five and oh, at the top of the standings in the West. I was a doubter. I was one of those who believed that they were not going to be able to even get close to mid table in the West. And that was a game ago. I mean, when they beat San Jose, I got on board. I said, hey, this team is for real. And now they go to play in, in Rio Tinto, tough place to play with altitude, with a team that uh, is well coached and has a structure, has an identity, and they just put them to bed. I mean, they uh, are a team that is very clear on what part of the field they want to play the game on. They're going to play it on your end. Yeah. They're going to pressure you. They're going to make sure that that's where we spend most of the time. And they do it so well. They do great cut at angles. They do great. Uh, in a team pressuring, very disciplined on when they do it. They got guys that fit the system, uh, and they have a clause that either we got to call them Gasper or uh, F-22 Raptor Stealth. I mean, whatever <laughs> reference you want to make of that no one sees them, despite having the frame of a fridge, because he's huge, but no one sees this guy. And he intercepts Every single pass that you can possibly think of, he takes advantage. So, man, I mean, they're just a team to applaud. Uh, Nicholas Giochini, are you kidding me? That, that's a guy that when they got him in the draft, I scratched my head. I'm looking, all available players, and I said, why? Because he fit their system, and now he's working. He's uh, productive. So there are no words other than, I don't know applauding that's it there are no words just sit back and just applaud because the scouting the the way they build that team is it, working man and they're just a freight train they, they just can't be stopped right now well and, and you you look at that i mean we may as well just say you know with with klaus that you know he's a, he's a stealth bomber you know he, he's he's either the stealth bomber or he wears the cloak of invisibility very very well kind of like wonder woman's plane that can go invisible you know <laughs> uh, but no, he's probably, I mean, probably the stealth, the stealth bomber right now with what we're seeing out of St. Louis. I still think that the summer is going to be a different, uh, it's going to be different for him because you, you're going to run out of gas in that system at some point because you can only run like hell for so long before 
you're 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 hitting e on the 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 petrol you know no absolutely no it's going to be interesting on what they do I, i've wondered if their early success is going to push up some acquisitions or if it might just delay them but yeah i'm with you i think at some point playing this type of system that much effort i mean it's tough to keep up nobody could keep up with this type of rate all right so now the the play by major league soccer in an international window your basic thought on it is what basic thought on what Major League Soccer playing in an international window. Everybody else takes the time oh. off. You've got the Euros. Premier League's not playing. All the major leagues aren't playing. Major League Soccer is during the international window. What did, what did you think when this popped up? Just used to it. I mean, I I could criticize it. I could say, hey, we got to mo modify things. But the reality is that MLS is currently playing under a very tight schedule. There are a lot of competitions. Uh, you're adding some more with uh, Leaks Cup. So th there's just so many different components that I think everybody's getting used to it. So it doesn't bother you as much. Uh, I see it as an opportunity for young players to show up, which we saw this whole weekend with several players coming in and uh working hard and, and really making a difference, right? So I I think it's fine. Uh, Brian Smetzer talked to us about it. He said that they're very open about when these types of windows are going to happen, when you're going to have minimized players. He said that there's been times where he's had 10 players missing. And you just work out that system, that pipeline from your younger players, right? I mean, Broken Reigns uh, from Houston is a perfect example. He took advantage of uh, Coco Karskia being out, and he played a great game. Uh, in, in Seattle, there was obviously not that many changes in terms of new players, but you had different positions, and you got a little Chu that also took advantage of Raul Ridia's not being in their team, and Jordan having to move up. So I think that it's just part of MLS. It doesn't bother me as much as it used to. And I think it's just a moment for other players to step up and take advantage of the lights being on them. Then you've got a guy like Denny Boanga who Ooh. grabs a 13-hour flight, shows up for LAFC, shows up in the 65th minute. It's like uh, Chirondolo goes, dude, can you give me 25 or 30? Boanga goes out there, and then sure enough, Halfway through that shift, or right toward the end of it, Buanga gets your game winner, and LAFC continues to be LAFC, uh, feeling like Denholm, the black and gold, getting full points uh, with the 2-1 win over FC Dallas. But I think that it speaks to the kind of guy that Denny Buanga is. Yeah, I'm going to hop a flight. Yeah, whatever you need, you know, throw me in, and you get this kind of result from one of the young stars here in Major League Soccer. I got nothing but respect for Dennis Buanga for doing what he did. It's not required. It's not needed. It's not expected. And yet he did it. He did it because he has a brotherhood. He has a team that needs him. He is the most dangerous player for LAFC right now. He's the epicenter of whenever they play their best soccer in the attacking end. So when you see a guy do that much effort in sacrificing, you know, having to play a game three or four hours after you arrived in the city, I mean, it's, it's to be applauded, especially when you come in and you make a difference as he did in a game where LAFC was seem out of sorts. And honestly, VAR was the protagonist uh, of this one. And uh, the game was clunky and, and, and stagnant and, and rough. And at the end of the day, he makes the difference. So uh, we talked about it in Soccer Bar this week. I have nothing but uh, praises for a player that's willing to not be – I don't want to call it a diva, but, but, but just to go the extra mile, right? I mean, especially players who, are, who come in into a team with certain expectations and from Europe, it's very easy for them to be like, no, nah, it's all right. You know, I'm, I'm, calling, I'm getting called up on my national team, but he does it. He does the work. He comes in, makes a difference. Bravo. Uh, Dennis Buanga will not hear anything negative from me in 2023 in terms of effort and intangibles. So – we talk about things that we can say things about. And the this early kick that we're seeing in Major League Soccer from the secondary rights holder 
that's uh, usually a couple of hours ahead of the 7.30 Saturday window. <laughs> so far this year, those games have been absolute D-A-W-G dogs. Portland and LAG, a goalless draw. I don't think in the in the matches that have been in this early window before 7.30 Eastern, I think we can count the number of total goals in these matches on one hand. I think it's been less than five. You got another goalless draw with Portland and LAG. Yeah, I mean, that's tough. I think it's less about the time, but just the te- the those are the, the games that, I don't know, in my mind, you might want to not call primetime type of games. So you do kind of throw the Thursday night footballs of the MLS in, in, into that category. Uh, but yeah, that, that LA Galaxy Timbers game was, was tough to watch on both ends. I mean, LAG created all these opportunities. They put themselves in prime positions to score, but they didn't have the quality up top to put it away. And Timbers held on for their life. And then in the last 10 minutes of the game, they turn it on, they make some subs, and they start making the LA Galaxy as the ref if, if it's time to blow this game dead. So uh, it, it was very interesting, but I'm with you. Um, I kind of like that early game just because it's. I love the MLS pass and, and a lot of the things that have come with this year. I'm able to watch games anywhere, and I've literally watched them anywhere. I wouldn't even say where I've watched those games. But it is kind of tough to pick a game, and uh, – 360 show is interesting, but I do want to watch a whole game. Uh, so it allows me to at least focus on one game throughout the day, uh, even if they have been dogs and sleepers or whatever. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of like the fact that I can focus on that one game and then move on to the next. Uh, but I do believe that the issue with the goals and the boring games is more about the moment those clubs are having in, in this moment in time. And it's kind of played out for some boring games. Elsewhere in the West, it was uh, Austin, Colorado, a 1-1 draw. Houston, you mentioned the 1-0 win at home against NYCFC. Minnesota, Vancouver, a 1-1 draw at Allianz. And San Jose and Toronto, which to me was a bit of a shocker. A goalless draw at PayPal Park with Toronto and their defense and San Jose and their offense. And so, of course, you talk about both and you get a goalless draw. Yeah, that, that one was, was surprising. Uh, but before you, when you talked Minnesota and all these things, it reminded me that had you told me at the beginning of the season that four of the undefeated teams were going to be Minnesota and San Luis, I tell you, you're crazy. Yeah. And that's the case. Minnesota, as much as they are not an exciting team to watch by any means, they're undefeated so far. I mean, they've been able to adapt to uh, a babelless uh, universe and uh, they, they've you know, came up and at least uh, added some points. Uh, but, yeah, that San Jose-Toronto games, uh, the the draw doesn't say how well San Jose played. Yeah. They were really on top of Toronto. Uh, Sean Johnson with some absolute wonderful saves. Um, but I thought that from what I've been seeing from San Jose, they've been very consistent about the way they like to play the players that amplified this team in general. And they just were a bit unlucky and they got stopped by a Sean Johnson that was just in a whole different vibe. And, and he was unbelievable, but definitely San Jose the better team in this one. A little surprising. Like you said that it was a zero zero draw though. In the East, Cincinnati with uh, Brandon Vasquez scoring and then scoring and shushing. That is a very, very dangerous thing to do when you're on the road. I mean, I appreciate a man's confidence, but scoring and shushing while there's a lot of game to be played, that takes that takes uh, that takes the grapefruits to do that. And Cincinnati got out of there with full points. Once again, you've got Nashville. They need somebody to help out Honey Mukhtar. And until they find that out, uh, Honey Mukhtar is probably somebody you need to avoid in your fantasy teams. Huh? Yeah, thankfully I don't have them, but yes, absolutely. Um, first time Cincinnati beat Nashville. Uh, that doesn't go without saying. Uh, I think Cincinnati, the other team that's undefeated, has been fantastic. Brandon Baskets finally gets into the scoreline, um, which is good for him. I think Santiago Arias, uh, when he came on, he was a difference maker. He actually is one of the players that pulls a little bit of that offense for Lucha to put that ball into the box. So um, I really like the Cincinnati team, but Nashville, they, they are 
too depending on Mukhtar. I'm not saying anything new here, but th they just really need to figure out what they want to do because you've said it before and uh, I forgot who we did the show with that we were talking about. It's time for Nashville to take the next step. It's no longer okay for you to be just a contender or just a team that is top three or top four when it comes to goal differential because you're so good defensively. It's time to take the next step and let's start winning some games. But, yeah, tough one for, for Nashville against a good Cincinnati team that continues to win. Our other, uh, other matchups in the East. Uh, from last week, Charlotte and Red Bulls, they had a 1-1 draw. New England over D.C., 2-1. Orlando and Philly, who were both missing 9,000 players. Uh, Orlando, the purple team, got a 2-1-1 -one -one over Philly. They can't wait for Andre Blake to get back soon enough. Uh, I think that Philly fans have probably had enough of Bendick face in net. Uh, and then you've got uh, Chicago in a crazy one with uh, Inter Beckham FC, 3-2. That one was crazy. And then uh, Columbus putting six on an Atlanta United team that had 14% of all of the call-ups to international duty gone from their roster, and Columbus put up a big number on Atlanta. Yeah, that was tough to watch, man. Uh, let's go from the good to the bad. I, I, I liked Orlando in, in, in the game, not just because of the win, but because it started to look like a team that is cohesive and Martino Heda is the Martino Heda that we expected to come into this league, gets a goal, gets uh, an assist. Uh, uh, and the other side, Andres Perez scoring against his old team. I always like it when that happens. Uh, so I wanted to point that out. Philly, uh, Philly was very close right there, tying it up, equalizing it. Just didn't get a chance. But I did like what I saw from Orlando. And now when it comes to Atlanta, man, difficult game. Just too easy for Columbus. Uh, Christian Ramirez puts on the Superman cape and uh, takes over for Cucho who's going to be out four to five weeks. So this is good for Columbus in many ways, uh, but with a roster that maybe you didn't see had enough to beat a very deep Atlanta team in my eyes. I mean, when you compare both teams before the start of the kickoff, I think, I think Atlanta has a better squad. Uh, and, even without Lucas Larjan, even without their top players, Columbus really puts it on Atlanta. I want to call it a fluke, and I want to call it uh, a, a game that just got away from Atlanta, but it was hard to watch. Well, and you also had the injury of Andrew Gutman right before the half, and there wasn't a, a suitable uh, replacement to help things out, especially as Columbus went two up top. And you're having to figure out, okay, I need a, I need basically a third center back, and having the the pieces unavailable to you, and then uh, you know you go from there. But uh, that's one you put in file 13. You sit there, you wad it up, you sit there, and you eliminate the file or take the flash drive. You, <laughs> you know, you snap it in half, you put it in the garbage, and you just keep going forward. All right, cliffhanger. Saturday we have no early kick. We have no early kickoff, so everything is starting at 7:30 Eastern. And as we always do, for those of you who are uh, either watching on Twitch or listening for the first time, what we traditionally do, I blow through the schedule. Nico tells me to stop, and he wants to talk about a game, and then we go over the uh, the uh, the juice boxes that are attached to it as we are discussing what's going on. And the, the juice boxes are, are courtesy of our friends at Odds Portal, and it's done in a composite where they take 15 or so different juice box purveyors, throw them all into a pile, and come up with their answers. All right, so 7.30, Atlanta United and Red Bulls. Atlanta United's a plus 102. Your draw and Red Bulls are a plus 254. The juice box purveyors believe this will be a snapback game for Atlanta United in this one. You've got uh, – yeah. Uh, go for uh, it. I, I would agree. Uh, I think it's going to be low scoring, but I think Atlanta uh, will, will have enough. Uh, I believe uh, Tiago Mara is going to be available, uh, John. Yeah, so, not, he, is, he is back. He did not practice Thursday, but he will practice Friday. Yeah, I, I think Gonzalo's not thinking twice unless he comes in with uh, no right foot. I mean, uh, you need to put this guy in, right? He He's your everything, your absolute uh, amplifier in the midfield. Uh, so, yeah, I think that Atlanta needs it. They're coming in from a fluke. Uh, I like what I've seen from Rebel so far, but – I really do believe that Atlanta is going to be able to overpower and out transition at times. This Red Bulls team uh, played through that pressure well, uh, getting some of those pieces back. 
Uh, and because they're going to be able to play through that press, I think Atlanta gets this one for sure. Cruz minus 112 hosting RSL at uh, lower.com at the Death Star. Uh, FC Cincinnati, a big favorite hosting uh, Beckham FC at a minus 143. Galaxy and Sounders. Galaxy are favored at a plus 114. Sounders are a plus 221. What gives here? Uh, I really don't know, uh, but this might be one of those catch games because LA Galaxy are winning less and they haven't been playing well. And they, even when they do play well, they can't get a win uh, like they did in Portland. Uh, so it could be a catch game. That said, I've seen this Sounders team really have LA Galaxy's number over the last couple of years. I think that uh, Raul Rodriguez, who did not play uh, for Peru in the second game, uh, I think will come in rejuvenated. He always does after playing with the national team, especially when he gets overly criticized as he did uh, during the first game where he had zero services and he only got to play one half, but people just always get on Raul. Uh, so I think he's going to come in with some new proof. He always comes hungry. Uh, I really do think that Seattle's going to put a number on the LA Galaxy. Uh, so I might take both the win and the over in this one. All right. So let's since you mentioned that one, let's go ahead and check totals and see what you can get. Uh, let's go two and a half is well, that's not how I want it to look. I don't want it. No, I don't want it that way. I need numbers. Uh, let's first. Have, no, I need full time. And, and come on now. Let's let's be nice about this. It's right. While you look at it, I mean, I really think this is going to be an interesting game. Jordan Moore is coming in from that huge game. He's going to be played back, obviously, yeah. on the wing. But I think that continues to ignite his fire. He is uh, getting this little alter ego where he's doing this unlike Jordan Morris stuff, which I like him. And I think that I would love to see a little bit more abrasiveness and a little bit more ah about Jordan Morris. So let, let, let's see if that works out. But I really do think this Sounders team is going to go to LA and take care of business. All right. Your average at plus two and a half is a, is a plus as a minus one thirty one three and a half in the composite is a plus one eighty three four and a half in the composite is a plus four sixteen. So that's a lot though. Yeah, so plus plus four and a half, four and a half is a plus four sixteen, three and a half is a plus one eighty three. That's what you're staring at with your totals. Oof, uh, that's a tough one. I, maybe the three and a half. I'm gonna have to look at that closely, but uh, I would be taking the Sounders for this one, and then we'll 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 look about the composite a little bit later. All right, so that's the the number that we're staring at with that one. When we go into the uh, other matches in Major League Soccer for seven thirty. Revs hosting NYC at a plus 114. NYC is a plus 236. Purple team is hosting Nashville. Orlando City is a plus 145. Nashville, who can't score, is at a plus 190. Philadelphia at a minus 167, hosting Sporting Kansas City, who's having scoring issues and defending issues at a north of plus 430. Toronto hosting Charlotte. Toronto favored, but once again, it's at home at BMO at a plus 106. 830. Chicago hosting D.C. at a minus 116. D.C.'s north of plus 300. F.C. Dallas, Portland Timbers. Dallas is a minus 156 at Ooh. home. Portland is north of plus 410 on the okay. road for that one. Let's hold that one there. Uh, uh, give me the, um, the over on goals, and uh, I will tell you why I think that Dallas is, is going to have to dismantle this Portland team, I mean, they're due for a big goal game. Uh, what I see from Portland, when I look at a team that continues to be Hospital FC, uh, now their goalkeeper's out. And, uh, yes, they're getting a couple of players back. Darren Esprit is back uh, in this one. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, if I check my notes real quick, uh, Frank Bully will be available for this one. Uh, I think – not only might he start, he should start, or he has to start. I mean, there is literally – this team is needing something different up top and, and more soldiers in the bench. Uh, so even with all that said, I just have not been able to really see this Portland team be compact. And I like the fact that Gio sticks to his play, but sometimes he's going to 
cost you. And I think this is the game where Dallas is going to make them pay for that. Two and a half in the composite is a minus 130. Three and a half in the composite is a plus 183. So that's probably what you're staring at. Is that? Yeah, I think three and a half. Uh, I feel comfortable with a three and a half. At a plus 183. So that's what you're staring at with uh, FC Dallas and Portland Timbers at 830 Eastern. Uh, St. Louis City. Sorry, St. Louis City SC hosting Minnesota United at a minus 123. Do they get their sixth? I, I think I, they do get their sixth. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Minnesota has – it probably – Make you want to say it's going to be a draw because of the way they've been playing. Uh, but I think San Luis City is going to really take advantage of this team. Um, San Luis City, their pressure, uh, the way they move the ball, um, the way that midfield has no problem on playing direct at times. And uh, just the the moment that Claus is in right now, uh, I, I think he's going to really dismantle this uh, Minnesota team that – I believe they've been a little lucky and they've been self-aware. So they've been somewhat cautious on their play. Uh, but I think that they might want to take advantage of this young, younger team and a team that's new to the league. And uh, San Luis might do a number on them. Black and gold at a plus 116 on the road at Colorado with the Prairie Dogs at a plus 219. San Jose hosting Houston at a minus 125. Canadian Classique, 1030 Vancouver hosting Montreal. Vancouver is at a plus 114 CF Montreal soon to be impact. Probably hopefully maybe never at this point is a plus two and a quarter. <laughs> what else, uh, what else sticks in your mind before we go? Well, not a lot from these uh, games to be quite frank. Uh, give a shout out to Cabral with Colorado. Uh, you know, I thought he played a, a very good game against the Austin FC team that continues to have issues. Nick Lima, Needs to never, ever again play center back. Uh -huh. uh, but good for Cabral that without this Colorado team, without Yappy, without Rubio, he becomes the man. Uh, him and Mickey Barrios, just two lightning bolts running right next to each other like beautiful gazelles. Uh, I, I love it. Uh, the way he was able to use that movement off the ball to get himself open and uh, put the uh, ball behind the net, uh, uh, in the net, I think is great. Uh, so. Props to Colorado, despite it just being a draw. Um, but LAFC obviously being LAFC and uh, getting those guys back, um, I think they're going to have no problem against Colorado. W this San Jose-Houston one is interesting because Houston has been playing better. Back-to-back uh, -back shout outs for this team. Uh, Ache Ache seems to have found a little bit of momentum. So can he keep that up? Uh, those players coming back, how is that going to kind of move and rotate uh, in San Jose? You cannot keep playing well and not getting wins. I mean, at the end of the day, nobody's going to remember that you had five or six good shots against Toronto. They want to see some goals. So can this team with uh, Luchi Gonzalez that has created a better squad get uh, a win against the team that – Seems to be on a roll here. So I think it's going to be a really good game. Uh, I'll probably take San Jose on that one either way, uh, but it should be a, a game I want to watch. What's going on at uh, Soccer Bar Pulso Sports and with you, sir? All right. Well, we just got some uh, missed uh, files uh, that, that we're adding on. Uh, we had a really good conversation with Freddie Juarez, uh, who has been – Stellar for Seattle as that Gonzalo Pineda substitution. Uh, I've been really caught by the way he runs the the, the trainings and how uh, voice uh, uh, he is and, and and how verbal and how uh, electric and energetic he gets this squad. So we had a really good conversation in Spanish, 14 minutes long about the system, the adjustments on the offense that they've made. Uh, the potential of Nicolas Odero last year, uh, a lot of those young players that, that Sounders have. So definitely a must watch uh, all in Spanish, though. Uh, but but it, it's definitely worth the watch. El Rolo and W, it's Thursdays with Nico because it's a Thursday and he's Nico. So uh, once again, my friend, thanks for hanging out with us. And we will be back at it again next week where we will look at this match week and see if Flight 600 stays in St. Louis and leaves Lambert, or do they get grounded? We will find out that answer and everything else. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks for the hanging out. Bounce back game for Atlanta. Watch there you, it. 
there you go. Bounce back for Atlanta. You know, a lot of folks are going to hold you to that. So play it safe, everybody. It's the end of the show. Mucha plata, y'all. That means I get to do this, and we will do it again next week. Thank <laughs> you.